guest speaker this morning. Uh, his name is Rain Gober. He is a friend of mine. He is a, most importantly, he is a young man that wants to preach the Word of God. Amen. And I talked last week about how there are 14 churches in Arkansas, 16 churches in California that I know of that need men to preach the Word of God. And this is a man who has surrendered his life to the gospel ministry to preach, thus saith the Word of God. So today, Rain, come on up, and uh, he is going to bring the message of God's Word. Give him a hand. Good morning. morning. James thought he was going to get up here and talk good about me. I'm going to talk bad about him. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Uh, James, he got a... He got a heart for ministry. He got a heart for people. That's what me and my brother were talking about the other day. You know, there's, there's some people that don't like James. And if you've been around James any times, you know he's different. Uh, <laughs> there's just something about James. But, but my brother said, but, but James got a heart for people. And that's what the Bible calls us to do is have a heart for people, have, have a heart for God's people. And, and that's James. Amen. Whether you like him or you don't, that's James. Uh, turn your Bibles with me, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to be looking at first verses 1 through 4 today. I got to turn there myself. Starting in verse 1. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, in which also you stand, by which also you were saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, Unless you believed in vain. I hear pages still turning. I moved too fast, didn't I? A little old lady got on to me about that one time. She, she come up to me. She said, can I give you one, one, one bit of information? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, slow down. I said, yes, ma'am. Said, Don't tell me what to do. I do what I want. No, I'm just kidding. Like I said, we'll be looking at the first first. Four verses uh, of chapter 15. And chapter 15 is dedicated to, to the resurrection of Jesus, uh, the, re- the resurrection period, not just the resurrection of Christ, but the resurrection of believers. And there seemed to be some uh, confusion about the resurrection of believers because we see in verse 12 that some were saying there is no resurrection of the dead. And Paul tells the Corinthians that, that if the dead aren't raised, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our faith is worthless. Our preaching is in vain. We're still in our sins and we're of all men most to be pitied. But but Christ has been raised. So so Paul is reaffirming to them in these first four verses that that you receive the gospel, that, that you're standing in the gospel and that you've been saved by the gospel. And without the death and resurrection, there would be no hope. That and resurrection, I put emphasis on it because the resurrection is absolutely necessary for our salvation. Uh, There would be hope. There would be no faith. And we would still be in our sins. Uh, We'll come back to that a little more at the end. But we're going to look at three points today. And it's one, the gospel which can be received. Two, the gospel by which we can stand. And three, the gospel by which we are saved. One, the gospel by which we can which can be received. Received in the Greek is the word parlambano, to accept or acknowledge, not to reject, not to withhold obedience, to receive something transmitted or given, and just like our word received. And what happens when you truly receive something, being true or false? Your mindset begins to change. Your actions begin to change. Your desires begin to change. The people you place yourself around begin to change. You, you like to be around like-minded individuals, whether it be in a knucklehead or a goody two-shoes. And some, sometimes that's for the better, and sometimes that's for the worse. Because what, what happens when you change is that you as a person change. Your identity changes in some extent. Have you ever received something, good or bad, that had an effect on who you were or who you are and the things around you. See, everything in life is received to to some degree. Whether it being a piece of information, whether it being something material or something that's going on around you. When when you read the Bible, 
the newspaper scrolling through social media, checking the mailbox, an email, driving down the road and you see a billboard, you're receiving information that has effects, whether big or small, that can affect you emotionally, financially, or even spiritually. When we, when we receive something material-wise, whether we buy it, find it, or someone gives it to us, we are receiving it into our lives. And sometimes we receive things into our lives that aren't always bad. But the thing is, it gets bad when we get consumed. And when we get consumed, we start neglecting the things that are important. You ever ne neglected your wife, your family? Guess I'm the only one. Ever ne neglected the word of God? Ever ne neglected prayer? I guess I'm the only one. We, we, be we begin to schedule our days and and our time around this thing that has now become a part of our life and in some way has become part of us. When, when we can watch this show, when we can play on the phone, I know I'm not the only one. It's so easy just to keep on scrolling. Man, them little short videos, they funny. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's so easy. To sit down and watch a TV show or, or, or when I can play this game or, or when I can play with this new gun I got or when I can go hunting or when I can go to the gym or when I can go fishing. And you can kind of fit whatever you want, whatever you like to do in there. And none of these things are bad and can be very enjoyable. But it's when it becomes an idol in our lives. Well, what we say, now it's just an escape. It's not really fun anymore. It's just an escape. We don't have to think about anything else. You get that feeling of just like, man, I'm relaxing. But, but what I've noticed when I'm, after 30 minutes of scrolling on my phone or doing something, I feel like anxiety starts building up because, because it's becoming an idol. Sometimes we have to receive things that are just going on around us. Receiving things is not always voluntary. There are things that go on at work that we have to receive and deal with, things at home that we have to receive and deal with, things at school that we have to receive and deal with. We lose loved ones or have people that are in addiction or have suicidal thoughts or have fallen into a false identity. And we, even though those things aren't happening to us, they're happening around us and they're happening to people we love, so we have to deal with them to some extent and they can have a great effect on us. But, somebody say but. We're not talking about receiving information from a worldly source. Well, we're not talking about receiving something material from someone or somewhere. We're not talking about even receiving the things around us. We're talking about receiving the gospel. Because the gospel is the most important information you or I could ever receive. The, the, the gospel has more substance than anything you or I could own. The gospel doesn't change the things around you, but it changes the way you respond to the things around you. The gospel transforms your mind, your actions, changes your desires. You grow from, go from having a wor worldly thoughts and worldly actions to, to dwelling on Scripture, staying in prayer. You begin to hate the things you once loved, sin, and begin to love the things God loves. Have you ever had a relationship with sin? When I, when I asked myself this question, a story came to mind uh, during the summertime. It was July. Me, James, and some other guys were at a house doing a cleanup, and this guy come walking down the road. And he, it was obvious he was a drug addict, and I was a drug addict, so I could relate to him. And so I, I started presenting the gospel to him, and he started just breaking down, crying. He, he didn't make a profession of faith, but, but you could see the Spirit working upon him. And by the time he left, I said, man, do you have any drugs in your pocket? He said, here it is. And I said, dump it out. He said, oh. At that moment, there was the flesh and there was the spirit. Because he had a relationship with sin. And I seen myself in that because there was a point in my life where I had to come to a point of saying, either I'm going to get rid of the drugs or I'm going to serve Jesus. 
And that young man, he, he took it out of his pocket once again, even though he didn't want to, and poured it out, and I went to stepping on it and pouring water on it. Because sin grabs its claws in you. And only the power of God can release them claws through the gospel. Because the gospel changes you. The gospel changes your identity where it's no longer with this world or with the sin you are partaking of. And with Christ, it's now with Christ who is eternal. Anyone in the Bible that we see that received the gospel received by faith and faith alone. From the Old Testament to the New. Hebrews 11 tells us, by faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he would not see death. By faith, Noah. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Sarah. By faith, Isaac. And it goes on. Peter, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Paul, all received by faith. If not, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, they'd have kept on fishing. Watching the water go by, washing their nets every day, nothing would have changed for them. They would have went out in the morning and came in in the evening, went home and did it again. Matthew would have kept being a tax collector, stealing from people. Paul would have stayed Saul and continued persecuting Christians. But God called them to faith. God called them to salvation by grace through faith, giving them a new life. Point two. Let's read verse one again. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you receive, in which also you stand. The gospel in which you can stand. And reading this, one could take the word stand and say, well, that means like doing stuff. Reading the Bible, praying, going to church, getting baptized, partaking in the Lord's Supper, singing in the choir, serving when we can, being a good old jolly fellow. And all that is good, and as Christians, we should do those things, but the stand here kind of has a, a two meaning. The reason we're able to stand is that it's because of the gospel, it's because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, it's because... We're because of the grace of God. It's by his hands that we are in, and nothing can remove us from his hands. The Corinthians could not lose what they received. You cannot lose what you have received. The, the Corinthians were on the foundation of the gospel, and the foundation is that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And three days later was raised according to the scriptures. And we are placed upon this foundation. A, a man put it to me like this. Think of it like concrete shoes. They stepped in it and they were stuck in it. They received it and they were stuck in it. And the gospel is the best thing you could ever be stuck in in your life. Because either you're going to be stuck in the gospel or you're going to be stuck in hell. When a person truly experiences... The saving work of Christ, they are saved, period. Their sins are no more. Even when we indulge in sin, we're still in the Father's hand. Nothing can separate us from God, but this does not give us a right to continue to live as we want to live. Paul says, are we to continue in sin that's grace, so grace may increase? May it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? If you are saved, then you are dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit lives within you. He's there to, to teach, to guide, to direct, to convict, to encourage, to bear witness. And even though Christ is the reason we stand, the Spirit, which He gives us, allows us to continue to stand apart from this world. Now, 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 since we have been placed in such a great salvation, there is a work to be done. Not for our salvation, but because of our salvation. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. 
which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. We are God's, and he already has a plan for your life. But it comes to that point when you are willing to set aside your plan and turn to his plan of salvation, and then you will see the dominoes line up. Point three, verse two. By which you are also saved if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Let's clarify Paul saying, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, is not implying you can lose your salvation. Because if we could lose our salvation, I'll speak for myself. If I could lose my salvation, I would. It, it's not that necessarily we hold on to our salvation, but God holds us in salvation. He is the one that saves us, and he is the one that keeps us saved. But Paul is addressing that there very well could be people within the church that received the gospel, that, that did not receive the gospel, that were not standing in the gospel and were not saved by the gospel because they believed in vain. See, these three points that I've given you today, the gospel which can be received, the gospel by which we can stand, and the gospel by which we can be saved are not really three separate points, but they all go together. Because without receiving the gospel, you cannot stand in the gospel. Without receiving the gospel, you cannot be saved by the gospel. All three of these come back to that, that we are saved by grace through faith, that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. And we see in verse 3 that Paul received in the same way, by grace through faith. Let's read through 3 and 4. For I delivered to you of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to to the scriptures delivered to you of first importance Paul reaffirms that there is nothing more important for you for your family for your child for your mother for your father anybody on the face of this earth than that Christ died for our sins and rose three days later Amen. that's where it starts that's where it begins because that is the foundation he also says, according to the scriptures, twice, he points to the authority that is to be in our life. The word of God is what, to, what we are to cling to for answers. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is birthed through the word. Faith is strengthened through the reading and the hearing of the word. Without the word, we would have no answer. Without the word, we would not know the way. Because it points to the character, the grace, the, the righteousness of God. So according to the perfect word of God, we, we have hope through the death, burial, and resurrection. Not a hope that is uncertain, but a hope that is assured. But because God never went back on his word, not God has never changed his word. He, he has been the same from, from Abraham to Isaac to Joseph to Jacob to James to reign. It's never changed. And I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want a God who changes. Because in the, in the world we live in, there's a lot of change. I change. My wife changes. My boss changes. Church members change. But God does not change. It, it, it is solid. It is there in black and white. And we can depend on it. According to the scriptures, even when I was in my sin, Christ died for me. And he died for you. He paid the price that we could not pay. That's the only way we can be made right with God. It's through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Could I get the band to come, please? You can take it for what it is. You don't have to take it for because for, Brother Rain said it or Brother James said it. 
Take it for the, for the word of God, that, that the word of God says it, that we are, in, we are sinners in need of a Savior, and Jesus made a way. Jesus made a way. Receive the gospel today, and you will never be the same. Receive the gospel today, and you'll be able to stand on a firm foundation. Receive the gospel today, and you will be saved. If you have doubt, come talk to Brother James or bro me or uh, somebody in the church. Because it's either you are or you aren't. But it's by grace through faith. That you set all your pride to the side. You set your feelings to the side and say, Lord, I'm going to take this for what it is. That you say that you have something better for me. That it's not a life that's, that's bound by sin, but a life that is changed because of what you did. Put your faith in that and see what happens. If you don't believe me, give God a try. Give him a week of your life. Give him two weeks and see what he does. But remember, he may not show up how you want him to show up. There's something here today for you. Whether you're saved, you say, Brother Rain, I'm saved. I'm good on that part. But maybe you received something in your life that has maybe taken a hold a little too far. Maybe you received something or someone into your life that has a bad effect on you. That's pointing you away from Christ. To lay it down today and say, no more. Even if I struggle with it, Lord, I'll turn to you. Even if I pick it back up, Lord, help me put it back down and I'll turn to you. If you're broken today, receive the gospel. There's times in my life where I have to come back to when, when, when a little pride arises, when, when something happens, when I got to come back to Jesus Christ, the perfect son of God, died for me and rose three days later. I'm not getting saved again, but, but I'm reaffirming. Just like Paul told them, I'm reaffirming that this is what it is. This is where I stand. And that is it. No matter what comes at me, no matter what the world throws at me, no matter how much changes, I take this for what it is. The altar's open.